cats have a requirement for dietary protein two to three times that of omnivores and herbivores. For taurine, we all know how important taurine is. Cats fed a purified diet containing purified casein as the source of protein develop retinal degeneration due to the lack of taurine in the diet. Protein. What we're going to discuss in this lesson is a quick protein recap. So the units, immune system and nitrogen, amino acids, essential, non-essential requirements and comparisons, protein digestion, how it works, why it's important, and the urea cycle, and nitrogen, the cat's main source, how it works, and more on the urea cycle. Adapted from all of these books and resources. Protein recap. Proteins are essential for the body because they are principal structural components of the body, including the organs and tissues. This includes collagen, muscle, hair, nails, blood proteins, and more. There is a constant turnover of protein because it is broken down and resynthesized continuously. But the body can synthesize new proteins from amino acids when necessary amino acids are available to the tissue cells. Units. The basic units of proteins are amino acids. Cats cannot synthesize essential amino acids and therefore the diet must provide these. But cats can synthesize non-essential amino acids with a proper diet. For the immune system, the antibodies that maintain the body's resistance to disease are all composed of large protein molecules. Plus, proteins found in the blood act as carrier substances. For example, hemoglobin carries oxygen to tissues. Nitrogen, dietary protein is the cat's principal source of nitrogen. Nitrogen is essential for the synthesis of the 11 non-essential amino acids. Cats can make 12 amino acids when adequate sources of nitrogen are in the diet. Carnivore Connection. The Carnivore Connection to Nutrition in Cats is an excellent paper written by Deborah Zoran, DVM, all of these fancy letters next to her name. This is a great resource to share with your cat's veterinarian. Dr. Zoran goes through multiple studies and references to prove that cats are strict carnivores and have a higher requirement for protein compared to other mammals. I'll quote some quick results from studies below. For protein requirements, cats have a requirement for dietary protein two to three times that of omnivores and herbivores. For taurine, we all know how important taurine is. Cats fed a purified diet containing purified casein as the source of protein, develop retinal degeneration due to the lack of taurine in the diet. And for other amino acids, cats also have a higher requirement for methionine, cysteine, arginine in their diet compared to dogs and other omnivores. Now it says other omnivores. I think that dogs are more of facultative carnivores in that they can eat plants if they need to for survival. Whereas cats, they are true strict obligate carnivores because they need these and have higher requirements for these. For example, taurine, cats cannot synthesize taurine, but dogs actually can. So for protein requirements, we have the NRC, AFCO, and FEDIAF. These are the organizations responsible for determining nutrient requirements for commercial pet foods. So at the top right, we have the NRC for kittens weighing 1.8 pounds. Their recommended allowance is 10 grams of crude protein. For an adult cat, consuming around 250 calories, 12.5 grams. And for nursing cats, it would be 41 grams. Now, all of these report in different, <laughs> different amounts. So FEDIAF says for the minimum recommended level, this is based on the amount of food that they're eating. So 70 kcal per kilogram to the 0.67 power. Protein is 33.3 grams. And if they're eating 100 kcals, then it would be 25 grams. And for growth, for kittens, it would be 28 grams. And for reproduction, lactating and nursing females would be 30. 
For AFCO nutrient profiles, this is based on a dry matter basis. So if you go on the pet food label, the guaranteed analysis, you would remove moisture. That's how you get the dry matter basis. So for growth and reproduction, so that's kittens and lactating and nursing queens, it would be 30% crude protein on a dry matter basis. And for adult maintenance, which means adult cats, 26% protein on a dry matter basis. So I think this is very interesting because on the right, I made this chart with prey and their protein percent on a dry matter basis. So a mouse can range from 44% to 70% on a dry matter basis. So AFCO, which is the organization in the US, their adult maintenance minimum is only 26% protein on a dry matter basis. A mouse provides double that at the minimum and basically more than triple that on a maximum. A rat is 56% to 71%, so even higher. And a quail is 71.5%. Very, very interesting. So the minimum that pet food manufacturers have to meet is substantially less than the protein that whole prey provides. Here are some amino acids. On the left, we have essential, which means that they must come from the diet. So again, we all know about taurine, but there's also all of these others. There's 11 others, arginine, histine, leucine, lysine. Then we have non-essential, which can be synthesized when adequate amounts of the essential amino acids are provided in the diet. And I put for glutamine, the essential is, it's often listed as non-essential, However, in some books, it's listed as conditionally essential. So I included it here as essential with the asterisk of conditionally. So for fun, let's compare some amino acids. So I took just four, arginine, lysine, methionine, and taurine. And on the left, I compared ground beef, beef heart, beef liver, and on the right, chicken thigh, chicken heart, and chicken liver. So you could see that the numbers in pretty much all of the categories are higher in chicken. Beef liver is similar to chicken liver, except for having lower taurine. So with chicken liver, we have 0.992. With beef liver, we have 0.594. But otherwise, chicken seems to be the better choice. And this is based on animal diet formula typical values. In these charts, I'm comparing lamb to turkey. So we have pretty much similar results here. The livers, again, are comparable except for taurine. But overall, turkey is better, especially thigh for taurine. And that's because thigh and heart are hardworking muscles. So the harder the muscle works, the higher amount of taurine there's going to be. And I think the smaller the animal is, the higher the heart rate. So that's why they have higher taurine. So for example, in both of these situations, the birds have higher taurine compared to the grass grazing cow and lamb. So for the highest in each, we have for arginine, the highest is chicken thigh, turkey heart, and beef liver. For lysine, the highest is turkey thigh, turkey heart, and beef liver. For methionine, the highest is turkey thigh, turkey heart, and beef liver. And for taurine is turkey thigh, turkey heart, and turkey liver. And we'll go much deeper into the amino acids, what it does for the body and sources and future sections. I'll also make some ingredient heroes, so to say, for each nutrient. And I'll definitely make more of those comparison charts because I had a lot of fun doing that. So on the left, these are actually some chicken hearts. And on the right, this picture is of chicken liver. Liver pretty much looks the same across the board. It just kind of <laughs> looks like pudding. <laughs> Important, you might be like, ah. <laughs> so I'm not saying to feed your cat only beef liver. Liver is excellent. However, it's only a small piece of the diet. So think of a mouse, he's made up of more than just liver. So typically when we're doing ratio diets, liver is around 5% of the diet. So you would never feed a whole bunch of liver at once. It's very great, it's rich in nutrients, which is a good thing, but also means that toxicity levels could be higher. For example, vitamin A, very rich in liver, so you don't wanna to give too much. It's supposed to be a small amount of the diet. Also remember that variety is key. These are just brief examples, very small examples, since we're only looking at a four out of over a dozen amino acids. Fat, vitamins, minerals, etc., are also important. And I'll definitely make more of these comparison charts and we'll discuss ingredients and nutrients more in future sections. 
So for protein digestion, we have carnivores versus omnivores and herbivores. A study among cats fed a low protein and high protein kibble diet or starved for five days showed that cats may have only minimal capabilities for enzyme adaptation. This proved cats have an unusually high protein requirement compared to other mammals. Antibodies, the antibodies that maintain the body's resistance to disease are all composed of large protein molecules. And for the digestion cycle, protein amino acid chains are progressively cut into smaller pieces. Eventually, these are broken down further into single beads or pairs of beads called peptides. Most are reassembled to build protein structures that the body needs. So basically, the cat digests beef proteins, rebuilds them into cat proteins, leaving no trace of beef left behind. And this picture is turkey gizzards. Nitrogen, an adequate source of nitrogen is required in the diet so that cats can synthesize the non-essential amino acids. The cat's principal source of nitrogen is dietary protein. Energy, studies document that cats use dispensable nitrogen for production of energy and in other metabolic pathways like the urea cycle. The urea cycle, excess protein is not stored in the body, so leftover protein is used to produce energy in the urea cycle. It is one of few safe forms where nitrogen can be eliminated from the body and it is eliminated through the kidneys. Substances, the four substances that also rely on nitrogen include nucleic acids, purines, pyrimidines, and certain neurotransmitters. Up next, we will talk about fat next, and we'll dive much deeper into ingredients and individual nutrients in future sections. Just remember this is the introduction, just an intro to nutrition. I'm really excited because I have some ingredient superheroes like I mentioned before. So when you're formulating, you'll you'll be like, oh, I'm missing iron. Okay, beef spleen is a great source of iron. So just little, little nuggets like that. So please post your questions in the comments. That way I can gather FAQ and make future videos for future lessons. Some things to prepare and practice for now. Compare AFCO and FIDIAF requirements for protein amino acids in cats. Use the USDA food database to compare meat ingredients and amino acid profiles. And just a note, taurine is typically lacking because humans can also synthesize taurine, so there's not that much data on taurine just to be aware of. And all requirement charts and links to USDA data are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.